Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Screaming Frog SEO Spider, and particularly some advanced secret features that most people don't have a clue about. These features are your secret weapon in SEO. They give you a competitive advantage because pretty much nobody uses them in Screaming Frog. And this is where the power of this SEO tool, Screaming Frog SEO Spider, really comes into play. I'm giving you all of the features that I use day to day in an e-commerce and SEO agency that I run. So let's jump into Screaming Frog SEO Spider and get started. We're going to use this test website, refillfinder.com, and we have our Screaming Frog open here. If you haven't downloaded Screaming Frog yet, go to screamingfrog.co.uk and download it. You can even get a free version that does 500 URLs. From there, we're just gonna copy and paste the website we're working with. Hopefully you have some idea of what the website is and what it, the pages kind of are, but you don't have to. Just place it into the uh, text field at the top of the Screaming Frog Spider and then click start. Now this would start getting URLs instantly crawling the website as Google would. But before we do that, I do like to do a few settings that I want to share with you. So we go into configuration and the first thing we're going to do is go to user agent. I like to set these, this as Google bot, the smartphone, Google mobile indexing is typically the way they do. Google now uses mobile indexing first. And so you want to use a Google bot smartphone so that the web crawler emulates Google. From there, you can add in different API accesses such as Google search console, page speed insights, hrefs, anything you want. Um, Google Analytics and Search Console are a must have for this. Now, the first amazing thing you can do that you may or may not know is the segments feature. And so here we've already set up products, product category and pages segments. These are incredibly useful. You're essentially sec setting up different page types on your website that you can then analyze independent. For a website like this, which is e-commerce, we typically have product category pages that list out product categories. We also have product pages that are actually the product with some details in them. This is the typical layout for a Shopify website. Now, BigCommerce and other platforms will be different in their URL structure, but an e-commerce site is almost always these templated pages, and you can look at tech issues and opportunities for SEO per type of page. So in this case, products, product category, and pages. All we do is click this add button, and then we use one of their filters, such as address contains slash blog. We wanted to add a blog segment. We name it blog, we give it a nice color, and then we're good to go. Click okay, and now you can run this crawl. Of course, there's tons of other settings that I went in the other videos on about, such as JavaScript rendering, and other things you want to look at before you crawl your website. But these are still the essentials for what you really need. You can get 90% of this, just this. And as you can see instantly, it's showing us our segments by our colors that we've added. This is so useful as you'll see here in a second. These segments can be very powerful for diagnosing large websites and seeing issues that are present just on our products or just on our product categories, that kind of thing. Now. If we go here, I also just noticed there is an issue with our uh, product category segment because on this website, they're using collections within their product URL as well. So in this instance, we'd go to configuration and actually change this to have two filters, which is address does not contain slash product. And we'd enter that and then we'd save the changes and we'd resegment the URLs. So now they should be either in product category or products. In most cases, this is a strange URL here. You'd want to investigate. Move over to the segments tab here. So you're on overview, move to segments, and you can see the URLs and the counts by segment. So, so far we have 848 product URLs, and you can see all of them here. We have 84 product category URLs, which you can see all here. We can see details like how many of them are indexable versus non-indexable. So already we have products. We have a lot, almost half of products are non-indexable. So it's something to investigate. And this is because of how uh, Shopify does its product URLs. 
effects that we implement on all client sites. We also get a graph of how these segments uh, break out into the issue tab. So how many opportunities versus warnings versus issues are present on product pages, category pages, uh, normal pages, as well as the blog. This website doesn't have a blog, so we're not seeing that here. But normally this is a very useful uh, segment as well. So this little overview tab is very useful. If we also go back to the issues tab, this will give us another view of those segments and the issues divided by them, right? So just products, which is this purple color, um, have this issue, which is they are canonicalized uh, to the original product. Classic Shopify issue. Um, and then here, this one actually is issues that are not in any of our segments. So it looks like there's issues with the search function potentially um, that you would investigate. Potentially, it might not be an issue. You got to use your brain. And so we can here see all of the issues in a beautifully visual way segmented by the website site. That way that if you have a problem with your product URLs, you can change the template with a developer to fix those issues. Same with category pages and the others. Not only that, you can also segment your entire pretty much product project by the segment up here. So you can look at all products and just essentially have your entire overview tab just be the products and you can look at all of those. The issues just be your products and you can look at the issues with your product pages. Uh, this is really just nice for analysis. Okay guys, so we looked at how we can use Screaming Frog segments to segment out the e-commerce website or any website you're using and look at the different segments and the different page types to analyze those for SEO ranking signals. This is extremely useful, especially on big sites. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is just as exciting. We're gonna look at how to visualize your internal link structure with Screaming Frog SEO Spider. The fact that this can happen is amazing. What we need to do is we're gonna wait until this crawl is done, and then we're gonna go up to visualizations. This visualizations tab here, we can see a lot of interesting ways that they visualize the internal links. Click on visualizations and then click force directed crawl diagram. This can take a while to load on a complex website, but wow, just look how pretty that is. I love when Screaming Frog added this. It's absolutely incredible. So how do we even interpret what's going on here? This is a visualization of the internal links on the website. And you can see this is the homepage URL. So each one of these circles is a page on our website and how big it is determines how much authority or power is on that page, how much page rank is on that URL. And we can see that the top URLs are here right around the core website uh, domain, the home page. And that's giving us all these collection pages that are right at the front, as well as, you know, some about pages and information, things of that nature, giving us information that they need on the home page. We can see all these lines pointing out to where they link to different pages. And particularly these collection pages, like if you look at this one, it's linking out to products. And these are all the products that are linked out from this collection page. If we click onto one of these, right click and click focus here, we can actually have the, we can look at just this collection and all of its internal links to different products. So each one of these, as you can see, is a product URL. And we could open it in the browser to see what this looks like in reality on the website. And if we look here, we can see this is a collection. All of these are the internal links towards those product pages. And here they are. And they link back to the collection. <laughs> now there's a lot of text here with all the URLs, but the question you're probably asking yourself right now is what is the red all about? And when we look at this, what this just means is that these pages are canonicalized. So if you see there, non-indexable canonicalized. And this is just the way that Shopify does its uh, product URLs. So to create the breadcrumb, they create these URLs that are actually canonicalized towards an original version of the product. And why it's red is because that's not a good way to do it. Uh, con canonical URLs, um, don't pay don't pass the same amount of page rank and you're also not linking directly towards the page that's gonna rank so we want to pass from this 
page, the collection page that has a lot of page rank and authority, we want to give that link equity to the products and those come back to the top level category. But here we're actually linking towards a, um, you know, a canonicalized URL. We're not linking to the correct URL here. The correct URL is this one. And so that's why it's marking them as red as an issue to investigate. We can click the back button here and we can investigate each one of these by right clicking it and focus here. And it will generate it sometimes. And then we can see how this sort of URL silo is being constructed. We can see we have the second page here, which, um, which is green and uh, not canonicalized. Now that can even be a focus itself uh, and it can be an issue itself, not having uh, having those in different ways. But anyway, we now can see the entire website structure as all of these product URLs that are really just collections linking to products, and all those products are red. And we do see this URL here, which is bright red. This means it's a client error. So we have a link to a broken page here, and if we focus this here and we open it up in our browser, we can see this is a 404 not found page. I won't spoil all the fun because this is an amazing tool and you can watch more videos at Screaming Frogs YouTube channel. But if you go up to this adjust settings for the graph, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. So you can change the length of the links. You can change the separation, mostly visual stuff. You can change out the colors however you want. We can make this look insane. So it's really fun stuff. You got to check this out. Play around with it on your website or competitors to see how they're siloing and clustering out their website with internal links. It's extremely important for SEO. Okay, let's take a step back and look at something extremely simple but is very useful, which is Screaming Frog's ability to crawl just a subfolder. So if we wanted to look at just Adidas's blog or our own blog or just our collection pages, something of that nature, we can add in the URL here and make sure it ends in this in a slash. So you don't want to do slash blog, you want to do slash blog slash. And then we go over here, it's going to start at all subdomains or subdomain. And we're going to move that to subfolder. And if we click start here, we can see that from this point on, the Screaming Frog SEO Spider will just crawl the blog of Adidas. So we'll just go through here and crawl all the blog pages on the website so that we can do a content audit. We can analyze what they are doing for their SEO content. We can look at all the factors that Screaming Frog is already showing us. And so if we go to HTML here and we can scroll, scroll over, we can now see all of the title tags for Adidas's blog. We can see all kinds of information about their blog, including word count and all kinds of fun stuff. We can look at their heading tags and everything there. Now, a third thing that it's even nicer than this, we can do something that is absolutely amazing with Screaming Frog, is that we can use custom extractions to extract any information from the pages that are within some repeatable pattern within the code, within the HTML or CSS. And now to do this, go to crawl config, and within here, you're gonna go to custom. And we can see we have custom search, custom extraction, and custom link positions. What we're gonna look at is custom extraction. Custom extraction allows us to create, extract data from internal HTML pages. And this uses XPath, CSS path, or rejects, or um, a regular expression, sorry. And if we add this in here, um, we can see we have various things we can add to this extractor. For a very basic one, uh, I'm going to name this H1. And for X, X path, all that's going to be is slash H1. And by doing this, it will extract all of the H1 tags, um, which Screaming Frog does by itself. So it doesn't matter as much. But here's something useful we can do with this is H2s. So we're going to name that H2 and do the exact same thing, slash slash H2. And now what this will do is it will extract all of the heading twos, the H2s on the page. And if we add another one, H3, it will extract all of the H3 tags. And we can even add H4 if we'd like, so that it would extract all the H4 tags. Now, why this can be useful is on a content audit, uh, Screaming Frog only, and we're gonna hit start here, Screaming Frog only extracts 
uh, the H1 tag normally in two of the H2s. But this will give us, if we look at here, once it starts loading up, I'm gonna just pause it here. We're gonna scroll down on overview and we're gonna scroll all the way down pretty much to the bottom and then scroll up to custom extraction here. And you can see these custom extractions, H1, H2, H3, and H4 that we've taken out. And we can look at each individual one um, or we can look at all of them. And you can see here that now it's extracted every one of the H2s on these pages. So we can see the H2 4, we can see all the way up to an H6, so H2 6, meaning that this is the ninth H2 tag on this page. Now this can be useful for multiple reasons. Now a heading tag, if we open up this article here, a heading tag is very important. The heading structure is very important for our SEO. And so on a, a content audit or something similar, looking at these pages and seeing how they're structured is very powerful for a content audit and seeing really what is a brief overview of this page. And so already we can get a good idea of our overall content on the website just by looking at, okay, what are their heading tags? And what is the word count on that page? This is pretty much a full structure. Now I would normally use H2s because those are pretty nice. Another thing we can check here is it looks like some pages don't have, as far as I can see, we can check this. Looks like some pages don't have heading tags or H2s very much. And so this is an opportunity page right here because look, find your fit, when to choose a high support bra. These are just not how to choose one. They're H4s. They really should be H2s here. And so already we found an opportunity page that we could change these to H2s, as simple as that. Hit edit, change it to an H2, and we have a benefit that we can provide the page and we can rank it better on search engines. So this is custom extraction. Now this is the very baseline uh, example. I use this because it's very simple to kind of understand. If you understand heading tags and how a page is structured, this will tell you essentially the basic outline of each of the articles on the website. And it gives you a uh, starting place for doing some sort of content audit with, uh, with Screaming Frog and you can export this, of course, and review the heading tags on your blogs. In general, you should have an H1 and only single H1 and then several H2s, you know, typically five to 10 to 15, even more sometimes, plus H3s going into more detail. And so quickly we can see how they're structuring their articles. But custom extraction is extremely powerful. We can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. You know, depending on what you want to extract from the page, you can use either XPath, CSS path, or regular expressions. And you can get almost anything out of this. And you may be asking or saying, I don't know XPath, I don't know custom, you know, all of this stuff. I don't know regular expressions. These XPaths can get simple for just basic tags. Um, but what's really beautiful too is that ChatGPT can, can help you with it. It can write regular expressions. It can do all of this for you. And so another use case I've used for this is finding, say we could extract this content here and analyze it. We could analyze it with uh, ChatGPT or anything like that. And we can see it has a div class. And we can actually try to copy this and try to extract it. So we can look here and we can copy the XPath here, the full XPath. Um, and we can try to see if we can extract this content on all collection pages within Adidas. Now, why we might want to do that is to analyze it, um, to look at, we could have chat GPT look at how readable is that content there? Um, how long is it perhaps? We want a longer content piece here. I'm noticing there's only automated internal links, which are useful, but it'd be nice to have internal links here. And so if we extract that, we can add internal links and then re-upload it. So a lot of cool stuff we can do. You can also look for empty collections. Oftentimes a typical technical SEO 
issue we'll find is that there'll be collections with empty products that are maybe linked here. As you can see, we have all kinds of collection pages linked. Now Adidas isn't going to have this problem, but a lot of websites do where they have empty collections. They might have, you know, different product categories with different issues on them. We can extract all of that to see what is there. We can extract really anything on this page. So we can extract the product names. We can do this or that. And if you use ChatGPT, you can give it this page and you can even ask it for a regular expression to, you know, can you help me write a regular expression for to extract, you know, the content on this page, something like that. Now I just said general content because we don't have all day. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna give us some here. It's acting like it can't extract the page, although oftentimes it can. So you always have to play around with ChatGPT. Now we don't have all day, so I can't look into that extensively, but if there's any like there's zero products in this collection. You can extract that and find zero product categories or even low product categories. Usually there's a product number here. So I think this is 90. Um, that's probably how many products are in the collection. Yep, 46. So we could also extract that and get how many products we have in each product category. And so here, if we just right click this and we copy, copy XPath, uh, I did that on Screaming Frog right here. And we, we can notice within the config, I just pasted that in there. I named it product count. I clicked OK. And then I ran this crawl. And you can see already it's extracting the product numbers from these pages. So for training, it says 955 products. And you see 955. Now, I believe that's the product count. It doesn't actually say really. But this is how you can quickly extract data from a website at scale using this kind of methodology. So if you did need all of your product categories, so you have thousands of these and you want to see how many products they have, this is a very quick way to see that. See, already we see this pink training shoes collection product category has two products. And now to Google, this is a pretty thin page. Now for Adidas, they can get away with it and they have content here. So I'm not saying it's an issue, but pretty thin page here. So it's something to consider on whether they really want this page or whether it might just be low value content. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this custom extraction on Screaming Frog. It's very powerful. Let me know if you have any questions on this. Happy to help. So we've learned a lot here. We've learned how to visualize our internal link structure. We learned how to segment the website so we can do analysis on particular page types. We've learned how to extract content from the website to see particular tags, particular content, such as the product count, whether it's an empty collection page, what are the heading tags? We saw a lot. Now there's a still a few more advanced techniques we can use on Screaming Frog SEO Spider that will help our SEO. Let's look at how to find orphan pages on Screaming Frog. So what are orphan pages. Essentially, they're pages on the website that don't have any internal links towards that page. So they exist on the website as a URL. You can visit, you can be on the page, you can interact with the page, but there's no way to get to that page if you're starting at the home page of the website. Now to Google, who's a web crawler, it's a spider that's crawling links. This is a negative signal. These pages aren't going to rank. They're essentially usually useless pages but sometimes they're useful pages that just need to have internal links. So if we scroll down to Search Console here, so we go all the way back down in the Overview tab to Search Console, and we find that, we can see that we have a couple fields here. Google Search Console on Screen Frog is very powerful. We can see all kinds of fun stuff. One of those is orphan URLs. Orphan URLs are these very particular zero or inter internal link pages. Very useful. Now we are on Adidas right now. Um, and so I can't add my, uh, my Google search console, but if you would add your Google search console, crawl the website and then go up here to crawl analysis and click start, then it's going to go run through all the pages and it's going to find these orphan pages. So you can see here, it says, please perform crawl analysis, to populate this filter. And if you do have these orphan pages, then this is another easy win to just look at those pages 
delete them if they're not useful and they shouldn't even be on the website or add an internal link if they are useful pages and then Google is going to start prioritizing and start at least noticing those pages and you're going to start getting traffic. Another amazing thing you can do on Screaming Frog is insert your page speed insights. You're going to add in your secret key here and here is information on how you can create that API key. It's actually very easy and once you get it you're just going to paste it in here and click connect. Using PageSpeed Insights, you can see all of these additional factors that they show. They show eliminating render blocking resources, properly sized images, and you can see these for every URL because PageSpeed Insights is different for every URL. So this gives you all kinds of page speed optimization opportunities for every page on your website, including some kind of strange ones, you know, use video formatted for animated content, all kinds of cool stuff and it will run through, you know, here I'm running 35,000 URLs through this PageSpeed API. So very useful stuff. So if you know me, you know I talk about internal links a lot and Screaming Frog is very powerful for this. We looked at how we can visualize our internal link structure, but also a very easy way you can audit your internal links, just going to the main HTML page, scrolling to the right, and you'll eventually hit upon in links. And here it is, in links, as well as crawl depth. And now we haven't fully crawled this website. I mean, we're only at 2%. This is the Adidas website. So we don't have much information here. But essentially, an in link is what is internal links coming towards that page. And an out link is internal links coming out from that page. And so you can quickly audit internal links just by organizing the these fields. So you can organize the in links and this will show you what are the most important pages, what pages are getting the most internal links or the most page rank or link authority towards those pages. And here we can see some of the top pages. Of course, a lot of times that's going to be your home page, but here we have some stores page. We have this training, uh, training category, all kinds of stuff. And these pages may need more internal links. So if we scroll down here, we can see what kind of internal links they have. So they do have a lot of internal links, so that's good. Of course, they don't do it in their content, which isn't as good, but still works out. They're using a module. But if a page gets a ton of internal links, we need to send that link juice out and to other pages that we want to rank. And so I would also be careful that are these pages that they actually want to rank? You know, like pink workout shoes, this is that two product page. I mean, I'm not sure if it should be linked on one of the most powerful pages on the website. You know, these uh, this training page is pretty powerful because it's getting a ton of internal links. It's linked within the navigation, all of that. And so you have a lot of cool stuff you can do with this in links. For uh, internal link optimization, you can also, if we pause this, do the crawl analysis and it will give it a link score for how powerful those links are kind of similar to this end links sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it's still nice crawl depth is also very important to look at you can crawl you can uh organize by highest and lowest crawl depth and of course on this small crawl we're not gonna get a ton of information but if we organize by crawl depth in this way we can see pages that have a very high crawl depth so you, you might need seven clicks from the home page to get to that page and so it's going to have low authority that's another page we can add an internal link on a core page and boost that page a ton and so internal link audits are amazing with screaming frog i have another video where i go a little bit more in detail on the tipper model that kevin indigan developed i am going to create a new video on that so stay with me stay subscribed like the in comment and do all the things that I appreciate so much for, for getting this channel off the ground. So subscribe if you're interested in the new tipper model of internal linking. We're gonna go through how to do this on Screaming Frog and how it can grow your search traffic. So thank you for everything. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, give it a like. Thank you, see you next time.